Pam here with Be Creative Crafts and welcome back. Today I have another tutorial for repurposing a Starbucks bottle. This time I'm turning it into a candle. Now you can use whatever color and scent you want, but I was trying to recreate the color and scent of a mocha frappuccino. So for this project your main supplies are a Starbucks bottle, I use the 9.5 ounce size, a white jar candle from Dollar Tree, and some wax melts. I was going for a chocolate coffee scent and I wanted my project to be tan in color so I picked up a pack of the brownie and pecan pie melts from Walmart and the Kona coffee melts from Hobby Lobby. Both are a dark brown so once mixed with the white candle should give me the color I want for my completed project. Now before you get started you're going to need to rinse your bottle and let it dry completely and go ahead and preheat your oven to 300 degrees. I set my white candles on a full lined cookie sheet and I did this for a couple of reasons. First, the cookie sheet provides a more solid surface for the candles and two, in case of a wax spill, it's easier for cleanup. Be sure to keep an eye on the wax. It took about 25 to 30 minutes to completely melt. Now you're going to want to add your scented wax to the jars. Now be careful because they will be very hot. So grab an oven mitt or a pot holder. Now I used three of the brownie pecan and one of the coffee melts in each candle. So for a little darker color, you can add one more of either scent. Five melts total and one wax candle is all my Starbucks bottles would hold. Then it took another 15 to 20 minutes for the scented wax to melt. Okay, let me back up just a real quick sec. These waxed candles from Dollar Tree are a whipped wax. That's why when they melt down, the jars aren't as full. It has air whipped into them, and that's just so that their wax will go further for making the candles. Or at least that's my guess as to why anyway. Okay, now I'm going to take a couple of these wooden dowels here. And one was not quite long enough to stir, so I've just taken two and taped them together. So let me scooch this over here into frame here. And now I'm just going to stir this up because I want my waxes to be all mixed in. And pull this wick out and we're going to use this wick. Whoop. Because we're going to use that in our other jar to recycle. Make sure that's good and stirred up. Because when it dries and re-solidifies, we want it to be a nice mocha color. Okay. I'm going to slide this back out of the way just for a minute. Careful not to touch that glass because it is very hot. Okay, so I had my hot glue gun here warming up. I'm going to grab one of my jars. Now, all I did was I rinsed these out, rinsed it out, and let it dry completely because you don't want any water in there. Sorry, y'all have my camera angle at a different spot than I normally do so that y'all can see this better. Okay, so now I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue. First, let me pick this wax off because that's not going to do me any good. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to the wick here. And then I'm just going to drop it right into the jar. I'm going to grab my little dowel and mash it into place in the center okay now you can use the wooden dowel or i had a pipe cleaner that i found that worked really well and then we're just going to wrap the wick around the pipe cleaner or again you can use a wooden dowel whichever you want the reason I used the pipe cleaner is because it laid down on top of it and it seemed to keep it from unwinding. And that is just to keep the wick in the center of the jar while you're pouring your wax in. Okay, let me move all this stuff out of the way here. Okay, now. Um, I've just got a little trivet sitting here. I'm going to set my jar on it just in case, just to try to help keep me from making a giant mess. Let's see, did I scoot it too far? No, there we go. One more little stir just to make sure we are good and mixed up. Now I'm going to grab my 
oven mitt. And then I'm just going to pour this hot wax into my jar here. Let's get that out of the way because we can pull it back over here in just a moment. Now, if you want to use a funnel, go right ahead. Perfect. Now I'm just going to slide my wick back over so that it is in the center of the jar. And then that's it, y'all. Now I'm just going to let it sit there and dry and then, uh, not dry, but, uh, cool off. Move that out of the way so y'all can see it. But anyway, all this is doing is just keeping that wick in the center so that when the candle solidifies, the wick will be in the center. All right, so we'll come back and check it when uh, that wax cools off. Here they are, all cooling down. You can see the one on the right is already changing colors. The one in the front that's missing the top label, I did add two of the coffee melts because I wanted to see the difference in color using five melts instead of four. I left my jars with the hot wax sitting on the trivet or a coaster or a pot holder to protect my surface. It may not have been needed, but with the hot wax, I didn't want to take any chances. So which one's the candle and which one's the drink? Okay, the one on the right is the candle. And here they are, all four completed candles with one drink. The drink is in the middle. Now, as you can see, the one without the label and without the top, that is the one that I used five of the wax melts in instead of the four. And then the two on either end, or the two on the far left and the one on the far right are the ones that I used four of the wax melts. But y'all, these turned out super cute. Now stay tuned and I'm gonna show you what happens when I burnt one. Okay, so I tested one out y'all. And this was after burning for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. As y'all can see, it burnt a deep pole and then burnt itself out. But anyway, so one of the posts that I had watched prior to making these said that once you melt down those whipped candles, that they will burn slower because they're no longer whipped. But that's not the case with this one. It burnt rather quickly. It did have a really good smell as it was burning, but as you can see, it's already burnt itself out. So I'll have to dig out some of that wax around that wick in order for it to burn the rest of the way. And you know what? It may be the wick and not the wax. Maybe it's just a quick burning wick. Not sure. But either way, I am super happy with how this project turned out. I think they turned out great. I think they're super cute. Well, I hope y'all have enjoyed this tutorial. Have a fabulous day. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.